What's up, y'all? What's up? I'm on here on a Tuesday. Hope all is well. Thank you guys for tuning in. Anthony Lee, A. Lee Real Estate. Don't forget, we got a home buyer event coming up June 4th. Um, come on out. That's going to be in the Overbrook section. We're going to be teaching you how to re how to repair your credit, how to get a decent credit score so that you can purchase a house and be the best borrower that you can be, and also how to get grant funds. I just got a client pre-approved for $12,500 for grant funds to purchase a house. So buying a house is possible. Just waiting for a couple of my partners to get in. Let me see. Temperance. What's up, Aunt? You're not driving, are you? No, listen, I got caught up in an emergency and I just pulled over and I'm just sitting in the car and I'm gonna do the live from the car. <laughs> oh, no, if it's an emergency, do what you want to do. No, I can still, I'm still going to be here for as long as I can be here. All right, well. You no, know, this is life. That's what happens in life. Stuff it, happens, and you got to keep going. And the beauty of it is, in real estate, is always something happening. So as exactly. you can see, Temperance is dedicated 100% <laughs> to help her clients and get you guys what you need. So we appreciate that. Um, definitely, Lonnie, no excuses. So, but Temperance... Just introduce yourself for the people who don't know um, who you are and what you do. Uh, I am Temperance. I am a, a Pennsylvania licensed realtor. Excuse my voice, it's a little raspy, so I'm having some voice issues too. But um, I actually am also a, a team member at the uh, with the Good Neighbor Real Estate Team. And I pretty much um, assist individuals who are looking to purchase um, if they're a first time home buyer, if you're an investor trying to invest in is that Liz um, trying to invest okay. in um, and in property investment and I also can assist you um, and just whatever other goals that you may have I don't know maybe if you're trying to purchase a second home I am available to assist you uh, in that process hi Liz hey Liz hey hey so I'm trying to get my headphone in it's all good. Go ahead and get it in. Get to get your headphones in. For those who don't know, um, Elizabeth, aka Liz, Medicine the Mortgage, the the Mortgage Wizard is what we call her. She makes it happen on the mortgage side um, with Movement Mortgage. Um, so we're going to be working with Liz for our next home buyer event, June fourth. Make sure you guys hit my story, hit the link, register. Again, this is a free home buyer event. I don't know who else is giving you guys this information, but we're giving it to you for free. And again, this is powerful information that is going to help you fire your landlord or move out of your mama's back room. So, you know, 2022, let's, let's figure it out. So if you guys got questions, drop it in the chat. But Liz, if you could introduce yourself for those who don't know who you are and what you do. All right. Hi, Elizabeth Paris. I hope y'all can hear me. Technological issues over here. But, um, Elizabeth Paris, I am a mortgage lender for Movement Mortgage. I have been in the industry for over six years, hence the name. I was in the medical field prior to, made a little life transition, haven't gone back. It's been a, it's been a good journey, but I'm flattered that I'm called the mortgage wizard. I, I just say I'm the person who gets the most gray hairs throughout the mortgage process. <laughs> <laughs> the gray hairs that you turn red, you know, it's all good. It's, yeah. Basically. But, <laughs> so, so temperance on yes. the side what are you seeing right now in the market or is it still super competitive are buyers going 30 grand above asking price still what's going on what's the temperature well the actually um i can actually say that the um the market is still competitive um i recently just submitted an offer and um unfortunately the offer wasn't accepted because there was um, a buyer who offered more than the buyer that I'm actually working with. So the market is, is still competitive, um, but I am noticing that there are some different trends going on. Um, I'm noticing that some of the homes that are in the market are um, maybe taking a little longer to go into contract. Um, initially, I'll say like, I don't know, a few months ago, it was like within four or five days you pretty much would submit an offer. It was your highest and your best. And um, it was just super, super competitive. So like I said, it's still competitive, but it's just that the homes are ending up being on the market just a little longer. I think like 
15 to 25 days longer than what it was a few months ago. Okay. Well, that's definitely good to know. Um, and when that 15 to 25 days, I guess, like you said, it's competitive, but it's not like they're not asking for your first kid anymore. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely not. Or your left leg. <laughs> okay. And, I, and I'll say it probably depends on location. So is there a difference? Are you clients Delaware County versus Philadelphia? Is the market a little more competitive in Delaware County or Philadelphia? Are they are they feeling a little hit? Like, what do you what do you see? I, I think that across the board, because you're right, it is pretty much um, different areas are seeing different things. Of course, different states. Um, you, you, I know that, you know, like I said, I follow the trends and I know in like some states where there were like these crazy asking, over asking prices that were being um, offered, that's not the case anymore. Um, but I, like I said, I, all I can say is just from recent offer submissions, it still seems to be um, competitive enough that individuals are putting in over asking um, offer amounts. Liz, what are you telling your clients as you're preparing them to submit offers? So, like, you know, if I'm approved for three hundred, but I need another twenty thousand, like, what what do I do? Because you know, like, if the market's still competitive, like, you know, how how does that work on the lending side? So I always advise clients on, and we have a nice active conversation. Hey, this is what your limit is for purchasing power. Now, oftentimes, uh, a lot of the clients that I serve are very budget conscious, closing cost conscious, rate conscious, all of those things. So a lot of times, if we know you have a $300,000 limit, I'm telling them, hey, this is probably where you need to start price-wise. You're not starting at three hundred. dollars you're going to have to take a good look and probably start about fifty to $60,000 lower than your limit so that then you can find homes where you can be competitive and still offer above and not feel like you're being squeezed out financially. Um, I'm also advising that they have got to let go of being rate sensitive. We're in an inflation uh, period right now. Nobody keeps saying that we're in an inflation period, meaning like, the government and what, what, what the powers that be or that what happens after inflation. I'm not going to say the R would, but we're definitely trending towards that as well. Um, so I'm telling clients at this point, your focus should be on controlling the price point because you can always adjust your rate. You can always adjust the terms of your mortgage. You can refinance in two to three years, especially with um, properties still steadily appreciating or going up in value. Mm. But what you cannot do is change the price you purchase at because that's set. So then that's the debt you're stuck with. You can't lower that without having to pay it down aggressively. Um, well, that's pretty much it, pay it down aggressively. So that's what I'm advising clients. Here's your limit or here's the limit we're discussing. And you need to come in way under that when you start your search so that you can be realistic about keeping a reasonable mortgage payment. I, I like that, Liz. That was really, really good information. So I don't know if you guys heard that, but I'll just reiterate it. Liz is saying, hey, if you're approved for 300000 don't look at $300,000 houses. Give yourself room. So giving yourself room, you also have to consider the things that I want versus the things that I need. So like, hey, I, the things I want, I must have three bedrooms. Maybe I need four. But maybe I need hardwood floors, or maybe I can do hardwood on the first level and carpet on the second. You know, all those things will make the price adjust. Or maybe a deal breaker, like for me personally, is I need central air. So, like, I'm willing to pay a certain price for central air, but I'm not willing to pay for an old kitchen. But you may want an old kitchen and don't care about central air. So, again, mm -hmm. all those things will fluctuate and help you determine roughly what the price points are going to be. So, again, if you know your ceiling's 300, you don't maybe you don't look at 300 because you don't need the house with all the bells and whistles. But maybe we can get you the happy medium of bells and whistles, you know. So, you know, just something for you to consider to be conscious of. Um, and then Liz, I mean, look, you don't have to sugarcoat it in regards to the R word. Cause I, I did put that in the title today. Like, no, you know, you did. Not, and again, we're no experts. We don't have a magic ball. Um, I will say for home buyers, the difference for you, you're buying for long term. If with the market correction, you don't necessarily have to, you want to be concerned, but you don't necessarily have to panic. You can still buy a house because you're going to live in it 
and you're going to outlast whatever the market correction is because like everything it's a cycle things go up for two to three years or two years whatever then they go down for maybe a year or two but most likely you're going to live in this house for the next i'm saying on a on a, on a short term at least three to five years i'm not saying you're going to be there for 30 years so again your goal is to buy this house it'll continue to appreciate the mortgage pay, the mortgage loan amount will go down because you're going to make your payments on time every month. And every once in a while, you might even make an extra payment out throughout the year um, to knock that interest down. And then but now sell it and you'll be selling it, walking away with forty to $60,000 in, in profit to go buy the next house, the move up house that you know you're going to live in for the next 20 years. But right. now be concerned because you'll have more than 20% to put down on the loan amount. So, and I really want to touch on that because I think the magic word that our community doesn't doesn't quite understand is leverage. Leverage is the one thing in real estate that allows you to make your next move your best move. And no one seems to grasp that, that even if the rates are a little bit higher and that prices of homes are going up, that also translates to values of homes are going up. So if you can control your price point and get into a home, understanding that you can still refinance in two to three years because of the value increase that has been steadily happening, that's the, that's the greatest joy of, of owning real estate. You never go wrong owning some land. What, whatever sits stands on top of it, you can never go wrong there. The stock market will do its crazy things. And yes, we know 2008 was a reality, but every recession does not mean the housing market crashes. That's just not the case. A lot of times that's happened once and we know why it happened. We're now in a space where value is still going up. Rates have kind of leveled out a little bit. It's leverage. You can tap that equity. You can pay off debt or finance college educations through owning and holding real estate. That's yours. Wait, temperance, you cool? I see the flashes. You cool? <laughs> now that doesn't have anything to do with it. Oh, like, like, I know. I you know, I don't want to be any movies. But I'm, making like, you I'm making you nervous. Then. Yeah, I see. So the red light be flashing well. Don't like that. <laughs> no, that's a, uh, it just so happened. I guess it's a fire or something going on. That was the fire trucks going okay. on. Okay. Oh, I thought we were on fire. I thought we was dropping that, <laughs> well, that real estate, buying a home in a, in a recession. I thought we was, you know, not like the sixes. Sorry, too soon. But you can. No, nah, but, but no, but that's that's definitely dope, Liz. I, I definitely agree with you having that leverage. And I mean, even to that point, like we were, Temperance, we were just talking about rentals. Yes. Taxes are going up drastically in the city of Philadelphia. So as a tenant, you may be locked in on a lease, but once that lease is up, best believe that landlord is coming to recoup them losses Absolutely. between property taxes mm -hmm. and that now he had that he or she now has to, you know, take they on incorporate into their budget in right. reference to their investment. Yeah. Right. So it's like it, it, at some point, I, if, if this doesn't force you to own a home, mm -hmm. I don't know what else is. But exactly. best believe, and I, and I mean, I was looking at apartments.com at rents and all across southwest and west philly two bedroom one bedrooms are 11 and 1200 now and i'm not just talking about university city downtown i'm talking about regular cops creek not regular but just you know everyday neighborhoods that you know working class people live in a one bedroom something that's some quality is 1200 dollars mm -hmm. something that's some quality that's a three bedroom you talking 15 1700 exactly and that's being generous. I think you're still yeah. being generous. I don't think, unfortunately, uh, that the rates, that the rental market is going to stay even that, uh, like, agreeable, to be honest with you. Because New York, talking to clients in New York, I'm talking to clients in, in Atlanta, and they're all just seeing 40 to 50, almost 60% uh, spikes in their rent, which is forcing, for those who can figure out how to maneuver, they're buying. For those who maybe need an extra year or two, they got to make a plan. You got to, you have got to figure out a plan to, to be able to buy a home and you need to give yourself a timeline because unfortunately the rents are only going to continue to go up. Mm. And Philly used to be one of that, that happy medium East coast city, not quite DC, not quite New York, especially when it came to rent and just buying a home. So now people have to start thinking about if rates are going up across the East coast, Philly is also going up. Now you need to figure out how to buy yourself some property. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. well that's definitely definitely something to think about and again it's nothing wrong with renting but 
However, if you like to have stability, you like to have control or even have input in what your future look like, home ownership is going to be the thing that gets you there. So again, we're, we're telling you the market is doing a little correction, but with the proper tools and the proper guidance, you can still come out a winner. Um, Cause buyers still are buying now, right? Temperance. Yes, absolutely. There are still um, buyers who are getting pre-approved um, or maybe working towards becoming pre-approved. I'm typically always sending referrals over uh, to Liz um, as, as often as possible. So individuals, you know, it's not that they just started today. It's a process mm -hmm. that they may have started six months ago, a year ago. And it's just unfortunate, like you were saying about, it's like, you know, uh, right now, um, what's going on and um, just across the world with inflation and everything that's happening, but that's not stopping individuals from achieving their goals. So they've been working hard to get to this point. And despite the spikes in interest rates and, you know, whatever else is going on in the market, they know that it's important for them to continue reaching their goal of home ownership. Listen, if you still paying for Netflix, I don't want to hear nothing. Because Netflix keep raising that monthly subscription price every three to six months, it feels like. Mm -hmm. I, if you can still afford to pay Netflix, and I know people think, well, it's only like $14, $15 a month. If you cut that $14, $15 out a month and put it in savings, it makes a difference. Or if you happen to own an iPhone, not trying to put out any folks, don't come for me in the comments, and you seem to be upgrading that iPhone every time a new iPhone comes out, these phones are a full rental or mortgage payment depending on purchase price. So if you can, if you find yourself doing that, financing it and paying that little bit of extra money on your phone bill each month, how about just keep the same phone or keep a reasonable phone that you can pay for upfront and then take those iPhone payments and put it in your savings or pay down debt. I think people have to shift their mindset. It's really not, it's not as challenging as you think to get the funds to purchase because you still need to save your own money to go through the home buying process. But you have to be able to say, what can I live without? Also, DoorDash, Uber Eats, somebody's yeah. going to come at me sideways. I'm just telling mm -hmm. you right now, mm -hmm. let it go. Cook your food. Yeah. Please. It costs less. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Tiana, Shante, I, I did see your comment about pre-approval and down payment. So um, just know, again, if you're in Philadelphia or feel like traveling to Philadelphia, June 4th, we have a home buyer event. The first step in becoming a home buyer is coming out to our home buyer event June 4th uh, from 1 to 2.30. Yes. It should be my story. It'll be in Liz's story and Temperance's story and the rest of the Good Neighbor team. will send a link. Uh, we'll drop it. But Ju or Lonnie, Lonnie, if you're still in here, put, drop the link in the comments. For registration, Lonnie. Nice. Yes, Lonnie or Leah, I think I saw y'all in here, but drop that link for registration in the comments. But to your point, to get pre-approved, you'll reach out to one of the good neighbor members. We'll connect you with Liz. Liz will basically do a consultation with you. She'll figure out what your goals are, what your preferences are, what your budget is, and then she'll send you a link to do the application. The application is online. Um, Liz, what are the things needed to complete the application for pre-approval? We're going to need uh, two months of bank statements, all pages, please and thank you. You can also link your accounts digitally on our site if you're comfortable. Um, you're going to need one month of bank statements. If you get paid twice a month, that's two. If you get paid weekly, that's four. You're also going to need to input your social security number because I'm going to do something called a hard pull to look at all three of your credit scores from all three bureaus. So I can look at the middle score of the three. Sorry, I, was, I didn't want to put my middle up. Sorry, y'all. Okay. Um, and then we're going to have a good, healthy conversation. Because I'm going to go through your credit report, which for a lot of people is very intimate conversation. I'm about to get all the way to it. Look at your debts. If you have student loans, if you're making payments to the IRS, things like that. And then we're going to talk about what makes sense for you financially. But again, let me just break it down for you. I'm going to need your social security number because I'm pulling credit. Hard pull, not a soft. I'm going to need um, two months of bank statements, 30 days of pay stubs. You can also add in your retirement account one month or the most recent statement if you plan on using some of those funds. Um, and just to add in, somebody asked, and I know you might begin to it, Anthony, how much you need to save for down payment. Um, a lot of times down payment can, at minimum can be 3%. If you're um, a military or part of the VA and you can use a VA, then you don't put anything down. But I also want to stress for closing costs, 
I know people keep saying you need five to six percent. That was the case maybe before 2020 and the pandemic hit. You need to start saving somewhere between six to eight percent just as an idea of the purchase price. Yes, there's grant money. Yes, you can get assistance, but you need to save your own money. And I would just like to add that um, when you're trying to purchase a home, you do have to have a level of vulnerability. Like Liz was saying about um, the information that she's taking from, from you in order to process the mortgage application, you have to be vulnerable. Um, and with you being vulnerable, it's going to allow you to embrace the direction that we're all going to provide because we're all working towards a common goal, which is to get you to closing. You know, we're not trying to steer anybody wrong. It's not that we're trying to be intrusive and get in your business, but this is what's required in order for your um, home purchasing uh, process to be successful and to get you to the closing table. And yeah. tell me everything, please. Tell me everything. I need to know, even what you have for breakfast. I'm dead serious. Tell me. As your lender, I want to know. It helps me figure out what's the best plan for you. If I don't know everything and I get a surprise, that could be the... The difference between an approval, keeping a contract, or losing a deal. It's it's that serious. So please, tell me everything. I promise. I'm, I promise I'm a therapist. I promise. And then also, I want to touch on something me and you've been talking about recently, Liz. For mm -hmm. those of you who are self-employed, you can purchase a house. You can get pre-approved. Um, Liz, you want to talk about being self-employed and getting pre-approved as well? Absolutely. Um, so there's two levels to this. And I say this for you may be a first time home buyer and you're self-employed. I am going to need two years of tax returns because your business ha needs to be established for at least two years. So I can have two years of tax returns, all schedules so that I can calculate something called your net income, not your gross, but your net. So I look at your income after your write-offs. A huge thing with my self-employed folk is they love to keep Uncle Sam out their business. So they like to write off all of their, their exactly. write off a lot, a lot of income. Unfortunately, that does, that does not help me get you pre-approved. I honestly and truthfully need, need to see solid income for the last two years. Talk to your CPA, please. And thank you. Um, you can once qualified with, um, some put income using those two years of tax returns, all schedules, all pages. A lot of times they are able to use first time home buyer programs. There are some of my self-employed folk who maybe can't go that route based on timeline of being in business. So I'm able to do something called stated income programs, which means I'm looking at your business bank accounts for the last 12 months to 24 months. And I'm using the deposits and income that comes in, in the, in the account to then say, this is what your monthly income is. Those programs have higher interest rates. They're not permanent, but it's a higher interest rate. And you cannot use grant programs with that. I like to make sure I'm clear about that. So there are two options for my self-employed folk. Uh, with the, the, the non, the stated income, mm -hmm. what's the down payment? Is it 20%, 25%? Uh, minimum is five. It can go anywhere from five to twenty five percent. Depends what credit is and what debts, you know, what we're looking at for that monthly income. I'm gonna assess all that up front. So look, for all my entrepreneurs, you don't have to hide, you don't have to make the excuse, oh, I don't have taxes, I don't have this. Look, but it will make you become accountable by let's get your income going into the business bank account first mm -hmm. and transfer it to wherever you're sending it. But again, if you track your income, let it all go in the business bank account, you now can purchase a house in 2022 or 2023. It's just that simple. Everybody's, you know, making money. Everybody's successful, right? Like Instagram says. So now you might as well use the bank statement and put it to use. Get, you, get yourself a stable home for you and your family, even for you and your business. Maybe you need a house with a basement for office. Maybe you need a duplex, whatever it is. But look, Bank statement, stated income will get you in a game. And then on top of that, having decent credit. Having decent credit is the game changer. 660 credit score or above, we can get you pre-approved with a 620. However, we try to give our clients the best of both worlds with the 660. And I mean, if you've got a 700 or better, you really, you know, you got the American Express of credit right there. So, you know. Absolutely. Or achievement with that credit score. Especially if you want to do products and programs like stated income, give me give me a good solid credit score, please six eighty and up. 
maybe six ninety and up. It just the pricing and the expense is different, and it makes for a better deal. Gotcha. Well, well, no, that that definitely helps. And I, like I said, I when you told me about that, I'm like, man, you telling me like, yo, I could buy a house, like, mm-hmm. yeah, buy a house. Like the money goes in, in the bank account now. I just need to give it to y'all so y'all can tell me what I'm approved for. Exactly. Listen, a recession does not mean impossible. It just means we have to be a little bit more creative as long as it's legal. That's all I'm going to say. Right, right, right. So for all you hairdressers, stylists, barbers, you know, independent contractors. Contractors. Yep, independent contractors, contractors, uh, work, construction, you name it. Mechanics. Mechanics. Let that money go in a business bank account. Let's just let it go in there and then we'll transfer it. So again, it's um, you want to buy commercial real estate. Um, commercial real estate is a different animal that's more so on the investment side, 100%, instead of the 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 the, the, trend, the residential side. But it's definitely possible. You want to do commercial, definitely got to have a credit and have a large enough, you know, down payment in order to 20, 25% if you want to do commercial. Um, you definitely need to be heavily liquid for commercial deals. I don't do many straight commercial. I I refer those out to a colleague. I know my limitations. Mixed use, I got you. Straight commercial, please go to this person. Got you, got you. And when she says mixed use, commercial on the first floor, residential on the second floor. Um, we actually have a listing with the Good Neighbor team in Overbrook. If anybody's looking for mixed use, we have a commercial space on the first floor, residential on the second. So. Let us know. It's listed at 275 in Overbrook. Um, but outside of that, Temperance, did I get anything or anything that you want to mention to the people? Um, well, number one, we definitely need everyone to come out and join us on June the 4th. Um, I Thanks. always think that is a good idea. Um, if you have like a lot of questions or um, you're confused about anything, coming to, bec- coming to those um, home buying seminars will give you a wealth of information and it also can help you have a starting point on whatever your situation is and trying to figure out how to maneuver. Like I said, we're all here from the Good Neighbor team to assist. Um, and anyway, you know, regardless if you're ready to purchase now or in the future, we are here and that is why we want to provide you with all of the wealth of information to get you on board to start working towards purchasing a home. Um, 1906 Alpha, the answer is no, but the answer can be yes. You just have to do it strategically. But overall, no, they don't let you borrow money to borrow money. You have to have your own money. Um, new the Entrepreneur, what's up happening, homie? Um, and Liz, is there anything that you want to mention that we, that we may have forgot, forgotten? Listen, there's plenty of grants, plenty, plenty, plenty of grants, whether you're in PA, Delaware, or New Jersey, come out. June 4th, so you can learn about all of the options available to you. We understand if you don't want to move or stay in Philly. We understand if you want to move out of Jersey into Philly. Whatever you want to do, come out. We're going to tell you exactly what your options are, how to qualify. And I'll be there to set up time and meetings and schedules with everyone so that we can follow up because I'm very serious about getting you into a home. So you, too, can have a gallery wall full of black art like I used to build it. Right. It looks beautiful. It definitely looks beautiful. Um, Well, we appreciate you guys tuning in tonight like i said like like liz and temper said we look forward we hope to see you june 4th um we are going to be giving you a free home buyer event um june 4th in overbrook i'm going to put that in the story the comment down here that's been pinned for registration um again we want to help you get credit score of 660 or better we want to help you uh get funding so that you can purchase this property in addition to that if we can connect you with grant funds so that you can also keep a little bit of money still in your pocket We got you. And we might even go into a a small, small tidbit of real estate investing if we get enough time during the home buyer event. Last time we got to go into it. So maybe this time we'll do it again. But definitely, definitely, we appreciate you guys. Thank you, Temperance, for making time for us tonight. Um, Even in an emergency, you get it done, as as always. And Liz, we always appreciate you making time as well. Um, Any other final questions or things that uh, that, that we may have missed? Come on, comment section. Come on, LaFonda. Yeah, right. everybody just said, you know, they'll they'll be there. So we'll definitely send me a message if you need the information. I'll send it directly to you. But meanwhile, like I said, we will drop it in the comments to you. Uh, I mean, in the story and in, on the post. So, again, thank you, guys. Homeowners, let's make excuses. Don't 
listen to people that bought a house 10, 12 years ago. Listen, listen to us. We do this every day. I promise you, we got you. Home ownership is an amazing thing. Liz said it earlier. Imagine you buy a house, you sit on it for five years, six years, you live there, you build your lifestyle, and you look up, boom, the market bounces back, or you just sit in the area where the equity continues to grow, and next thing you know, you're selling that house, putting 60, 80. I had clients sell their house. They got 60, 80 grand, some of them even 100 grand, six-figure checks from something that they bought 10 years, eight years, five years ago. Now they got money to buy the car that they want, straight cash, and put a large down payment on the next property that is there going to be there forever house. Listen, I have a client who literally just refinanced a property with me last June, July. Okay. We're not even a full year in, but what we assume we took the property value of the last appraisal. That property value is actually incorrect. The house, it was at, we valued the property around 150. I believe last time it's now valued at 215. That was just, I want to say, June, July of last year. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm, I'm giving it too many months. It may be more like August, September of last year. But just think of that. Yeah. Value 150, 150, and now we're at a value of 215 with the new appraisal, and it is May. Exactly. Like that's, they always say, crazy. they say, don't wait to buy real estate. Buy real estate and wait. Oh! You will get... <laughs> My God. <laughs> Like you will get a return on your investment. You know, mm -hmm. you really will. So, thanks. Well, definitely on that note, Tempers, we're going to close it out with that one. I appreciate you guys. You're welcome. You. Um, look forward to seeing you guys June 4th. Come on out and uh, enjoy your night. Be safe. All right. Good night. Right, you guys. Good night.